What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out the most reckless move in wrestling history. Now, this should be an interesting one. Wrestling is very dangerous, especially if you don't know what you're doing and you kind of got to rely on your, you know, your dance partner in the ring to make sure, you know, both of y'all don't get hurt. And that's the crazy thing about wrestling. Like, you're supposed to make it look like you're trying to hurt the other person, but at the same time, protect them. It's a fine art to it. Respect all the wrestlers out there, man. It, like I said, seeing it in person, you you get a better understanding of how uh, intense things can be. So we're going to check this out, see what's going on here. Appreciate all love, support. Y'all, Sean on the channel. Let's get right into it, man. Do it again. I wasn't looking. Usually whenever I start these videos, <laughs> I open with a brief introduction to the main focal point or whatever or whomever it is I'm talking about. But there really isn't a lot to describe in this introduction, so I'm not going to waste too much of your time here. All you need to know going into this video is that one part of you is going to think that this is one of the coolest spots in the history of wrestling. And the other part of you, your common sense, is going to realize <laughs> that this is one of the most reckless and dangerous spots a human being can ever conceive with their own mind. And it'll leave you wondering how such a spot could even take place to begin with. With that being said, if you do enjoy this video and you want to see more videos about the random stuff that comes to my brain in regards to pro wrestling, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. With that being said, let's get right into it. Meet Spiral BKNY. He wrestled throughout the independent wrestling scene during most of the 2000s, most notably in promotions such as the NWA, OVW, where he okay. was trained, and CZW, where the incident detailed in this video took place. Spiral would be well known throughout the Indies due to his flashy and seemingly over innovative style. Prior to my knowledge about the incident in question, I admittedly did not know very much about Spiral, but upon a bit of my own research, he reminds me of Teddy Hart a little bit in terms of the in-ring work from what I've seen. Oh, damn. A lot of things that I've seen in highlight reels of his are things that I would see more of during the late 2010s and early 2020s throughout each level of pro wrestling, mainstream or independent. Whether you like him or not, you cannot deny that at least some of his fingerprints remain on parts of this industry. Meet Mike Seidel. A 16-year veteran, Seidel has been a journeyman throughout his entire career performing in virtually every larger-scale wrestling company in the U.S. That list includes Ring of Honor, TNA, WWE as an extra, and AEW mm. throughout the majority of 2021. If you are wondering why the Seidel name sounds so familiar, that's because his brother is known by his longtime ring name, Matt Seidel, who was also okay. known as Evan Bourne during his tenure in WWE. Yeah. During his career, Seidel has worked various independent promotions such as IWA Mid-South, Ian Rotten, Chihuahua, <laughs> He's a very solid hand in any locker room you put him in, and I've only heard good things from other wrestlers about him. Both of these men would meet in the ring at the Tangled Web event for CZW on August 8th, 2009 at the now-named 2300 Arena in Philadelphia. This event is probably most known for being the night that CZW's founder, John Zandig, would announce the sale of the company to the man who runs it to this very day, DJ Hyde. The show would open with an eight-man aerial assault match featuring Spiral and Seidel, as well as B-Boy, Devin Moore, Facade, Ryan McBride, Greg Excellent, and a very young Rich Swan. Oh, wow. The itself is a very fun opener, and I do recommend it to anyone who has 20 minutes to spare. I'm not going to be covering the whole match like I did with KD. Jesus Death, Christ. That's not why we're here. We're here for a specific spot in this match, and I'm uh -oh. going to show you right now. This is already looking kind of dangerous. It looks like you got someone in the Styles Clash position where they're pretty much at the mercy of the wrestler giving them the move on the fucking top rope, might I add. Oh! As you can see, Spiral has Seidel in a pile driver position on the top rope and would deliver a backflip oh. Styles Clash. Which is something I would have... What the fuck? A backflip styles clash. What? <laughs> I, what? It's, that's all I... I no words. <laughs> Never imagined was even conceivable. Yeah. You could see Seidel's skull ricochet. Oh, no. not no. like ricochet. Off of the canvas and his body just lying there limp. He was supposed to kick out of this move when Spyro rolled him over, but he was just on another planet. So referee Brett Lauderdale, yes, the same Brett Lauderdale that founded GCW, 
had to forcibly stop the count because Seidel was not moving a muscle. In case you were wondering, this is how a Styles Clash is supposed to look. You get your opponent set up in a pile driver position, uh -huh. lock the opponent's arms in between your legs, and fall forwards while your opponent has to make sure he does not tuck his head in. Yeah. He was popularized by AJ Styles, and the name of the move was obviously coined after him. Yeah. Like a lot of moves in wrestling, it seems like a very easy move to execute, but there's serious potential for long-term damage if both sides don't communicate on that move properly. Yeah. Some examples include when the move was performed on Stevie Richards on an episode of Impact in 2010. Uh, oh! Thankfully, he ended up all right. Also in 2014, when the move was performed oh! by Lionheart, who is a UK wrestler who has since passed away unrelated to this, he unfortunately broke his neck. And oh! during 2016's episode of SmackDown, uh, yeah, it was worth. move on James Ellsworth, Ellsworth tucked his head inwards and Styles luckily was able to alter his landing to avoid any serious damage given to Ellsworth. The move outside oh. the margin of error when performed normally by one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time. So just imagine how much more dangerous it is when it's performed while the person giving the move is performing a fucking moonsault during its execution. <laughs> it would be one thing too if both guys agreed to do the move because at that point it would just be a very stupid spot and very bad judgment from both wrestlers and an yeah. experience that they would hopefully learn from and it would never be replicated. That would be the good ending. Although we all know that's not the case. Devin Moore, who was a participant in that match mentioned earlier, said during a shoot interview that Seidel was screaming, no, 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 before a spiral jumped off the top. Oh, road. shit. Spiral, you fucking <laughs> hurt Mike Seidel like that. I was underneath him. He said, no, no, no. What did your fucking dumbass do? Do a moonsault styles clash and almost kill the fucking kid. Way to go, you dumb fuck. I may be wrong, Damn. but I, think I can kind of hear Seidel screaming no while getting into position. It's very faint, but I can hear something. Dang. This can't be good for anyone. Matt Seidel would later talk about the incident in a shoot interview after watching it happen for the first time years later. And he said that Mike suffered from a concussion and a broken thumb as a result of this. Like, if you guys know what happened to Mike after that, like a concussion like that and it broke his thumb, it was horrific. Who thinks of a move where you trap the guy's arms like this and then do a moonsault? It's straight. It's so ignorant. While I would not personally use the same verbiage that Devin Moore used yeah. to describe it. You fucking... I absolutely agree with this sentiment. What the fuck was Spiral thinking trying to move like that? Yeah, bro. Like I said at the beginning of the video, um, you're supposed to make sure your opponent, even though y'all supposed to be looking like y'all are hurting each other, want to hurt each other, you're still supposed to make sure that they're, they're taken care of safely. Everything's done as safe as possible. If he's out there saying, no, don't do this, and you still fucking do it. You shouldn't be in the industry, bro. Because you clearly don't care. That. As I mentioned earlier, a Styles Clash is dangerous enough when it's executed properly. The way Spiral executed it on his Seidel made it so he basically catapulted Seidel into the canvas face first. With oh! no way of protecting his head by using his arms or anything of that nature. Spiral violated that trust in so many ways. Yeah. Like I said in the introduction, on the surface, it seems like the coolest shit ever, but in reality, it's fucking dumb and reckless, and it should have never been done in a million years. Diamond Gotch, a 23-year veteran, would mention in a tweet how Spiral asked Seidel about doing the Styles Clash off the top rope, but never mentioned doing the backflip. Gotch would oh. add that on top of the concussion, Seidel would suffer a seizure in the locker room as well as a oh. broken wrist, and that Seidel was at six to eight months. However, Seidel would go on to wrestle the very next week on an independent show. So that information might be a little bit spotty, but some also would align with what Matt said in the shooter interview. So take it with a grain of salt. Matt would end up making a full recovery, and it seemingly did not affect his career. Like I said before, he would make some appearances for WWE in 2018 and 2019 as an extra, and would wrestle for AEW for the majority of 2021, tagging with his brother Matt for most of it. His in-ring career seems to have slowed down a lot, as he's only wrestled a handful of matches since 2022, but he is 40 years old after all, so it does make sense. Spyro would wrestle until 2011 after this incident, until he became paralyzed after attempting a 630 leg drop. A 630 alone is such a crazy move to attempt, but with that much momentum just to land on your ass, or even worse, your neck if it goes wrong, is so scary. Unfortunately, he would become a quadriplegic father, Oh. and would pass away in 2017 at the age of 36. Damn. I could not find the cause of death, but if anyone does know the cause for whatever reason, feel free to let me know just out of genuine curiosity. But yeah, that was Spiral, Mike Seidel, and the most reckless move in wrestling history. What do you think? Feel free to let me know down in the comments. What this was... This was crazy. Hey, man, I'm gonna go ahead and 
Let me do this. I'm going to do this live. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this video a like. This is some, uh, the videos by uh, KLA Clips. I'm going to link down um the video in the description and i'll also link their um youtube page as well as the first comment in this uh video man definitely go show them some love because um that's crazy that is crazy bro rest in peace to the guy um you know he dude loves some extreme spots but the cost that comes with it bro like is ridiculous i, I mean I, bro i'm still kind of speechless bro I, I hate to have heard that he passed away but you know it's just one of those things where it's like man dude literally threw his body out there that it's different when you put your body on the line but you try to be as safe as possible but when you put your body on the line and you're not trying to be safe as possible that's where the issues come in so either way man wrestling involves multiple people trying to make sure that everyone goes home safe and sound and to try to do a backflip styles clash off the top rope when the person is probably saying no let's not do this let's just do a styles clash and you still want to do that and then they end up getting hurt like that's crazy man but comment down below let me know some other wrestling videos y'all want me to check out appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you next one peace